Madam, we want Singapore to be the place to create and internationalize digital solutions and businesses. This means our businesses, people, and government must all play a part. Singapore has always embraced technology to serve our needs. I recall we formed the National Computer Board in the 80s to computerize the civil service and improve public administration services through the use of ICT. In a similar vein, government will take the lead in Singapore's whole of nation initiative to develop into a smart nation with GovTech helping to lead digital transformation within the public sector. In the past year, GovTech has been developing national level digital platforms and infrastructure to help catalyze the digital economy. GovTech has also partnered other agencies to use technology to enhance and transform the way government services are delivered to our citizens. Minister of State, Jaina Putucheri will elaborate more on their work later. Madam Mr. Zaki Mohammad said that cybersecurity is becoming increasingly important, and I totally agree with him. Cybersecurity was identified as an emerging growth sector as it is projected to grow at 9.3% CAGR to about $900 million and could potentially provide over 5,000 additional job openings by 2020. Also, as Singapore transitions into a digital economy, more and more aspects of our everyday life will be made digital. In today's landscape, we recognize that cyber threats have been increasing in frequency, scale, and sophistication as governments, businesses, and consumers have become more reliant on information system. No one is immune, and the government is aware that it is a potential target. Thus, as Singapore's cybersecurity strategy coordinates our efforts to build a resilient and trusted cyber environment, the government has already taken necessary steps within the public service to strengthen our system. So to further reply, Mr. Zaki Mohammad and Ms. Cheng Li Hui, the internet surfing separation policy is meant to protect government systems and citizens' data by removing one avenue which cyber attackers can use to steal information. Besides setting up necessary infrastructure to ensure that our officers can still easily access the internet for work, we are adjusting and adapting our work processes and introducing productivity solutions and tools to help maintain an efficient, productive public service. There has been no impact to our public service delivery. Members of the public are still able to send and receive emails from government offices. Government digital services and transactions by the public and businesses have also been unaffected. So we are working to ensure a smooth transition for public offices to meet our target May 2017 implementation date. This separation, Madam, is necessary and we will continue to review and calibrate our security measures to ensure that our systems remain resilient and trusted. Protecting Singapore's cyberspace and critical information infrastructure, or CII, remains a core mandate of CSA. Cyber defence is now part of total defence, so the National Service Cyber Vocation Announcement by MINDEF is indeed timely. It's an important part of the overall national strategy to build up a skilled workforce with NSF being deployed to CSA to augment capacities in protecting, protecting our CIIs. We are already growing our talent pipeline through upskilling and reskilling programs under TESA and the Cybersecurity Associates and Technologies, or CSET, program. So armed with the NS cybersecurity experience, some NSF may choose to take up careers in government agencies, such as CSA, MINDEF, and GovTech, while others will enter the industry. This will not only strengthen the wider cybersecurity ecosystem, but also become future cybersecurity entrepreneurs, creating jobs and economic growth. So, Madam, to complement these manpower development efforts, the government will introduce a cybersecurity professional scheme to attract, develop, and retain cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity practitioners in the public sector. Centrally managed by the CSA, the scheme will develop a core of cybersecurity specialists to be deployed across agencies to support. Singapore's cyber defences. As part of the ongoing efforts to professionalise the wider cyber workforce, the scheme will also provide a framework to catalyse growth and uplift the overall industry. So I'm likewise pleased to see the industry playing their part in growing the industry. Singtel, for instance, is reaching out to students through an interactive online portal called the Cyber Security Experience. This portal will be launched soon and hopefully such efforts will interest our students to explore cybersecurity further, and hopefully eventually join this very exciting field. Madam, I would now like to reply to Ms. Sun Suling and Ms. Ong Teng Koon on how we will be updating Singapore's media regulations 
to keep better pace with technology. I had previously spoken about our plans to update the Films Act, which was enacted back when screening a film required a physical copy on a reel. Today, films can be directly streamed from overseas. So we will be updating the Films Act for this digital age, and we have started consulting some key stakeholders, and we'll do a wider public consultation very soon. We will also update the Broadcasting Act this year. Singaporeans now have access to a wide variety of content on the internet and are no longer limited to services offered by Mediacorp or our subscription TV operators. While overseas content providers are directly targeting Singaporeans, sorry, when overseas content providers are directly targeting Singaporeans, we need to ensure that their content is in line with our community values, including the need to uphold racial and religious harmony. We are studying this carefully, Madam, to make sure that any changes we make will not add undue burden to our businesses. And in reviewing our amendments to the BA, we will rationalize some of the changes made in past years. One example is the 2013 online news licensing scheme for accountability and responsibility in news reporting. Many members have spoken about the increase and the dangers of fake news. The internet is vast and open, but if an entity reports news about Singapore regularly, to inform Singaporeans on matters of public interest, we expect them to do so responsibly. So I'm heartened that industry giants like Facebook and Google have realized that some control is necessary in this environment where misinformation can spread so easily. Google has prohibited advertisement on sites with deliberate misinformation, while Facebook is mobilizing users to call out misinformation in their news feeds. But the more details about the BA amendments will be announced soon, and we look forward to engaging businesses and the public on this. Amending the BA is the first step. For the longer term, we remain committed to harmonizing our legislation for a converged infocom and media environment. Yet, even as we update our legislation and regulations, it is even more important that those who use, create, and share content on the internet do so safely and responsibly while being discerning on any information they find online. To this end, we will continue to promote information and media literacy to all Singaporeans, particularly our young and those who may, who may be vulnerable. 